I sometimes am so amazed by like white people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, what if I just full stop ended there? Welcome to the Asian Non-Asian Podcast, the podcast with all of your favorite Asian friends. I am one of your hosts, Jenny Arimoto, and I'm usually with my co-host, Mike Nguyen. He is actually in the room right now, famously behind the camera today, because he wanted us to have a girls episode. (laughs) So he has decided to simply produce. He's on the the ones and twos. Is that what it's called? (laughs) The the zeros and ones, Um, which is... A fun little moment. I don't know. This feels very official. We have a producer in in the house. Wow. Um, so I'm going to attempt to do an opening announcement, which is actually just one thing, um, which is come to come see us live at Hack City, our live show, stand up show that we do um, on the second Friday of every month. The next show is April 12th. But in case this comes out after that, our show after that is May 10th at Union Hall in Brooklyn, Park Slope. Uh, information is in the episode description. Come hang out. It's so much fun. I'm hungover after last night's show. And that's kind of how it goes. We get freaking nuts. I drink a Miller Lite backstage. It actually goes absolutely insano in the braino after that. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) So anyways, I'm going to skip everything else. We're just going to get right into it. Hi. Hi. Okay, so let me introduce you. Today we have one of my girls here. One of my girls. Uh, She's an actor, a comedian. A dentist. Oh. Yeah, she's a girl boss. <laughs> uh, and she performs with one of my favorite acts, Asian Pop. I really, I, I think I've told you this like four times. Aww. I'm like, I really freaking love Asian That's Pop. So you guys are so good. Welcome to your ears, Maya Deshmo. Hi. Hi, Maya. Thanks for joining. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> we were supposed to also have Young Me. This is a little Aww. bit of backstage tea, but she does have COVID right now. Aww. So it will be just the two of us. But I think... That's actually great. That's going to be great. We're going to have so Regardless. much. Yeah, we're going to have like so much time to like freaking catch up and talk. Yeah. <laughs> With no men in the room. Happy International Women's Day to all of us. I know, I right? but honestly, it's over. So that's why Mike is here. That's true. <laughs> yeah, it was yesterday. Lo- yesterday. yesterday no men talk to no, no men. men no men which is a lie because our lineup was five straight men <laughs> <laughs> like all club comics Maddie. from manhattan and i was like this is the way we celebrate international <laughs> women's day um well this is the first time i'm seeing you in 2024 i think right i think it is yeah oh my god so i thought i would start by saying how are you doing but i mean like how are you doing this very second right now i'm doing great oh that's good i uh recently um i'm in between housing at the moment so i've moved in with my in-laws and can How I long tell- has it been since you've been with your in-laws? Uh, it's almost, I'm, I'm going on week two. Okay. I got to say, this multi-generational living yeah. is the fucking bomb. Oh, okay. That's it's good. It's amazing. Why don't we do, why aren't we living with our parents? <laughs> I was going to say the opposite for me. <laughs> I, I mean, like my a- in-laws are pretty awesome, but. Also, you have a baby. I also have a baby. Yeah. I also have a baby. <laughs> if I didn't have a baby, I would be in hell. But <laughs> yeah, okay. not really. I like them. But, you know, it wouldn't be the same. It's a different experience. It's such a different experience because I'm just like, I'm going to go. I'm like, I have a podcast. I'm doing a podcast recording. <laughs> Can you watch my son? <laughs> yeah, totally. And they're like, yeah. Do you guys eat dinner together? Yeah. Does someone cook the dinner and then you guys sit together? Yeah. <gasps> like, I haven't cooked. Really? I really haven't cooked. That's really cute. They always, they always have like a, like a prepared food in the fridge, you know, they have yeah. like, like little, they're white, you know, they're, they're white. Um, <laughs> we, love that. we love that. We love that. They're Jewish though. Okay. So they're, there's culture. Right. So they're not, there. they're not like white, white. Yeah. They're, 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 they've got some, they spicy. Got some they're spicy white. There's a little flavor packet in there. Yeah. Um, yes. They're spicy white, <laughs> but they're always they're So they're very loving and very warm and like, you know, there's always food around and they're just, it's just, it's actually just like, we have coffee in the morning. That's really Sweet. It's actually the sweetest. So, <laughs> well, I wonder. I don't want to leave. Make... Yeah, I was like, just don't leave. I don't think I want to leave. How much longer do you have? I think I have till like ne- the end of the month, and then we're okay. moving into we're moving to Bed Stuy, so we're yeah. gonna move into our new place. That's so Bed-Stuy. fun. I wonder yes. if there's gonna be a turn where you're like, I'm ready for my own space. I think I'm gonna. I mean, like, I mean, well, when I I, I had norovirus earlier this week, and I was petrified. <laughs> 
Uh, okay, so is neurovirus a thing that only lasts a day? It's like a two day, two day, uh, forty eight hour trial. Okay, you know, period. Have you had it before? Yeah, I've had it like a bunch. Of, I mean, okay. like anytime <laughs> you got like a random bout of like vomiting and diarrhea, and you don't know where it came from, it's not. It's usually like a neurovirus thing. Okay, so I've never had it. Okay, which is why I'm Flex. the way you said it literally was like. Yeah, I've had it a lot. Made like, me feel oh. like I haven't I'm had like, enough life experiences. This might be like my third time this mo- year having <laughs> norovirus. It sounds so bad. Yeah, it it, it it's it, not like, great. Scary to me. It's just explosive. Wait, <laughs> it's just an explosive situation. That's so scary. And like, does it? Do you just like know? Like it's here. And you're yeah, like, it's, it's here. one of those things um, where like you know when you you know the comfort of a fart. <laughs> Where you know it's Where just like, air yeah. and it's not a solid, it's not a liquid, yeah. it's not a gas. Yeah, it's you, just a gas. Right. With norovirus, you never know. You never know what's happening. So when you feel it coming, you gotta you gotta run and usually you're right. right you oh know? my god. So that's Wait, kind of vibes. Wasn't it going around in was it over Christmas where like I saw the the headline come out that neurovirus was like spreading in New York? Yeah, that was recently. Was it recent? like yeah, January. So I was when I saw that headline, I was like, Oh, I can't use a public rep restroom i'm yeah. scared i mean that's that's i mean it's public it's look it's you get it from splatter right <laughs> it's not an air and droplet just it's just a fecal splatter uh-huh. or a vomit splatter oh my god and we live in like a gutter new Truly. york city is like a gutter but you know what it's fine okay you know you, you, you need some splatter in your life come I know. on it, it puts your life in perspective yeah it's just a bit splatter <laughs> But and I was sharing, but I was like, they have, you know, they're lucky to have more than one bathroom. So I was like, do not. Okay, yeah, don't. I literally there. like gave a switch. I was like, there's splatter everywhere. I'm gonna Clorox everything. Nobody go into that bathroom. <laughs> oh my it's god, full of norovirus. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you made it in a one piece. I did today. I did, and that even that is commendable. I mean, I'm fine, but and then now also now that I know that it's, I thought it was like a week thing. Like I thought no, it was like no, weeks it's of a this. little forty eight okay. hour little. <laughs> then I'm not scared. Six. It's like thirty six hours. Was in New York Times, but it's norovirus. Yeah, the way that I'm like, then come at me. I'm not scared anymore. No, you don't have to. I'm be just scared. Kidding. You get through it. You get through anything, right? Okay. Well, beautiful. It sounds like you're on the mend. Mm-hmm. How are you, food. Jenny? Um, I'm okay. You're okay. That's <laughs> 2024 has been an okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This week specifically, I feel this was one of the topics I was going to bring up. Was like, I feel like bored with my life Mm. and my normal ways of feeling excited are gone not gone it's just like not working have you tried drugs not yet maybe that's what i have to do (laughs) i'm only Mm. i've only i'm only doing my weed what kind of drugs i mean just weed come on okay i'm a mother i can't do powders anymore you know (laughs) powders I don't do that any. I don't. Yeah, do that. you don't do that anymore. I don't do that anymore. And well, I you have the fentanyl strips. If I could die, I can't like orphan my kid. Yeah, because I wanted to like you know do a yeah, key bump in the bed. I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> I can't do that. I just can't. Well, I'm just generally scared of things anyway. Of everything. So to, yeah, yeah, the world is uh, bleak. Yeah, so I'm just like sticking to weed and watching bad movies. That's pretty good. I mean, that's great. But yeah, like before, I think like basically the things that were exciting are normal now Mm, mm. you know you just get used to it like i love hack city but before i used to get nervous for before it now i don't get nervous yeah which is good in some ways but it's like that you know like there is like a a roller coaster feeling that comes with performing Mm. and then you kind of get used to it i don't know Mm. if you hit that point Mm. but like i hit that point like probably like a year ago where Mm. i was like i don't really get nervous about performing anymore which is beautiful but it also takes the fun out of it yeah like that feeling of like that stomach drop kind of. yes i love that feeling and like the joy of getting a laugh it's still obviously i'm chasing a laugh of course but you don't remember it anymore you get used to it and it's just like another day which is it's like perfunctory yeah but it's fine that means that you were doing it enough and what a joy that is but it's also like okay so that no longer is the thing that's like Ooh, it's exciting. Yeah. Um, I what else do I do? I like before posting something online, like a sketch online would do it. And now oh, I'm like yeah. my numbers are bad and Your it's sketches just like, are so funny thank though. You. Thank well, you. Well, so if much. it makes you feel better when I see a sketch of yours, uh-huh. I feel bad about myself because <laughs> I'm not doing enough. If oh that makes God. you feel better. That makes you feel really good. <laughs> <laughs> Part of doing this is making other women feel bad about themselves. Um, no, I but like that joy of that is yeah. gone because I've it just like is you know what I mean and like it just it's that malaise I know and I think it's also look I think it's like we're coming out of the dregs of winter that's what it's I've an election year I know it's a lot of so... things are really t- I mean there's so much like 
international horror like there's all the stuff going on you know yeah. all over the world and gaza and just everything wars, and it's just yeah. a war and it's just depressing and it's hard to feel joy at those times and i think that that's okay yeah i'm trying to remind myself that the world is bad and also it's winter yeah. like a, like the winter part unfortunately huge effect on me yeah um so i'm feeling very like I know. <laughs> and trying to figure it out. I am trying to socialize, but when it rain, it's so rainy so this week. Hard. I don't want to go out. I know. Um, I'm not dating right now. Um, not because I don't want to, but I'm too lazy I to mean, do it. Why? They're so. They're, oh God. Men are horrible. I gotta be honest with you. Yeah. I'm so happy. I'm. I've been with the same. I, I'm unfortunately in a heterosexual relationship, <laughs> but he's good. He's a good one. Right. But right. I look around. And I say to myself, how, how yeah. are these women doing it? I know it's a nightmare. It's an actual, I, I, I don't even know. Yeah. It's horrible. The bar is so low. It really is. It's like, I think I, I don't think I would date men if I was in the, in the scene. I mean, I get it. It's not great. Um, this has nothing to do with my experience, but I've obviously been watching Love is Blind. I don't oh, know if you yeah. watch it. I mean, like, I like bits and like, I know the, narr- like, I know the tea. I'm up I, I with the site. Okay. Okay. So this season has been. Really interesting. Interesting. Because yeah. the last season was horrible. Yeah. Like yeah, not yeah. fun. Like yeah. not even horrible, like boring. Yeah. So I kind of like dropped off. And then I wasn't going to watch this season until I there has been so much cultural conversation about Seriously, this season. Yeah. But I will say every man that you think is good mm-hmm. turns out bad. Yeah. Like it's like the narrative of almost every single couple yeah. is that the man sucks. Yeah. And even like the guy that I was like, that didn't really make it past the first part of the, of the season mm-hmm. because of like, you know, you have to like match and then your story continues. He didn't match. I was like, that guy is secure. Mm. He's saying the right mm. things. He's mm. independent. And then bad TV to, though. <laughs> I know bad TV, but also to come to find out he was in a relationship the whole time. Oh God. Oh God. And I was like, okay, so this is like garbage. Everything's garbage. It's actually every man I is think, horrible. I, I, I know. I, I really don't want to be that person. But I think as like I've gotten older um, and I've just been in this, you know, I don't really seek validation from men anymore. Like yeah. I used to as when I was younger yeah. or when I was dating or whatever. Right. I just realized their irrelevance. And after actually after being a mother, yeah. after going through the birthing process, no offense, Mike, but like... <laughs> I mean, why? You don't have to be here. Yeah. You don't have to be here. <laughs> you literally, like, women are, I mean, people who give birth are a poor, not that saying if you, I'm not saying that there's like a hierarchy, but like, I feel like a, a portal to the universe. Like, I am actually a goddess. That is true. Nothing. Not life... to like complain. Okay, myself. you're literally a goddess. I'm um, actually a goddess. This is what this episode's about. It's gonna but be then us. I'm just like I. I hate the way society has been created and manufactured, and the, just the patriarchy. Right. Because men are so irrelevant. They're so jealous of us because <laughs> they don't have anything. What are they good for? Absolutely, absolutely nothing. nothing. And I mean, like that should they be can, a song lyric. I mean, I think. literally after agri- after like the agricultural boom, after like we started <laughs> having like <laughs> agriculture, yeah. that's when you needed men to like do shit, right? Because then, and that's when women's bodies were commodified. Yeah. Because then, that's when you can create more human life to to replenish. You know, building some shit and building that shit and building some other shit. Right. And the organizational systems of like government and civilization were men. Mm. When everything before we were like hunter gatherer tribal and like that was all matriarchal yeah because you can't actually test paternity now you can but back in the day you didn't know who, who you don't know paternity right paternity could be anybody that's true wow we really got into it <laughs> sorry i'm just on i love of- it no i love it yeah i've never thought of it that way yeah. i don't really they're think just that je- much. they're just jealous of us <laughs> they're just jealous i mean i agree i mean it's just just seeing even the men like just around me okay i'm gonna not talk about it's not mike but like people men around me who are dating yeah i am like i think you're looking for a caretaker yeah like literally you are because nobody knows how to do anything yeah. because they think that domestic work and domestic labor is beneath them right and this is why people are so deeply and that's like going back to the whole like multi-generational living yeah we live in, I mean, because of capitalism, right. we live in these nuclear families where we are a mother, a father, and the two children, and the 
the picket fence. You all have your individual home and your own vacuum cleaner and your own dishwasher. And there's no collectivism and there's no sharing of labor. Yeah. So uh, and then immediately because of that, you know, the woman is the one doing all the labor. And it's actually like we have all this shit that's supposed to make our lives easier. But actually, our lives are harder than ever. Yeah, totally. I mean, do you think about that in terms of future? I think about getting older and I'm like the fact that we're all individualized. Like we yes. live in our little homes. I'm like, what's going to happen It makes me crazy. Me? It makes me crazy. It makes me crazy. And I, I, that's why I'm just like obsessed with just trying to like hang out with people as much as possible. Totally. I mean, that's why, I mean, New York is New York, but it's like, we're, it's kind of nice to live on top of each other. It is. You have to take care of each other. You have to. Because there's to literally see- no room to not. Yeah. Or you just have to see each other. Yeah. I mean, by take care, I'm just like, someone's like, I'm like, are they dead? <laughs> I'll just look. Yeah, totally. And then I'll keep going. But that that but that's <laughs> I mean No, it bleak. it counts. It counts. I, you know, if something weird is happening, I kind of stand nearby it just to be like keep my eyes on it. Totally. But I'm not gonna I'm, I'm not too, gonna like I'm, intervene. No, I'm not gonna intervene. I'm scared. I'm scared. But I'll look at a bigger bo- guy and be like, intervene. You know what I mean? But like, that guy's scared too. I know. We're that all scared. A, but I do kind of like do that, you know. I know. It's like you should be part of this. But honestly, if I was that guy, I'd be like, no, dude. Yeah, I, know. I, have a, I have a kid. I can't. <laughs> I can't intervene. Um, okay, so you kind of brought it up already, but you did pitch some idea or some topics you want to talk about, and the first one was late stage capitalism. Yeah, man. Oh my god, I know this is like a thing, but I'm really like the world is so bleak right now. I know. I I spiral about it a a lot. A I read lot. this book. It's called um, America: The Farewell Tour. Okay. By this author named Chris Hedges. I found it at the library because okay. now that I have a kid I go to the library and I'm like that. free books <laughs> this place is great I'm like um yeah the it was just talking about like the full like how our society and all of the gains that were made during like the New Deal era, like after World War II, Social Security yeah. and like the Housing Act and the GI Bill and yeah. all these things that mostly benefited white people, but all these things that kind of like gave a lot of our entitlement programs that we have that we benefit from are slowly and sl- or all the like all the gains made through like labor laws yeah. are slowly and slowly being ticked away because of like private equity and like um and uh you know, buying up more and more businesses right. and gutting them and making them profitable and that like how we're losing major taxpayers that used to have like middle class incomes working at some plant now they have no job anymore and they're working at a Walmart or they're working at an Amazon center right. or working and how because of that there's no money going into like local governments and municipalities so like all of these services are going to slowly slowly die off and like and um yeah and everything's just going to be privatized and sad and shitty and um yeah that it's really bleak. It's so bleak. <laughs> I love doing a comedy podcast. I know. I'm sorry. No, no, it's real though. I've been thinking about a lot about like late stage because ca- it's only going to get worse from here. It's only going to get worse. Part and of AI me is especially. Like, yeah. Part of me is like I need to marry somebody who has like citizenship elsewhere oh, yeah. where they're a little bit more caring about their people. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> but. I don't know what the answer is. I don't know. I think what it the just is, is a system that we're stuck in, but it's a system that we're stuck in, but we're also like tied to the system to gain wealth in this country. Because the the second you have any money in this country, the first thing they're going to tell you to do is like put it in the market, get like a right. you know, like you know, you have to grow your I mean, like that's the way you grow income or that's how you grow right. generational wealth. But the market is also like tied to like all those other things I talked about. So we're all like in a system that's actually making us sadder and worse I, you know totally yeah and, we, and then i've been thinking a lot about like my relationship to productivity mm. which is fully informed by this this yes. mentality of like you need to grind i hate rise and grind stuff but you know like tiktoks are always like you know i make x amount of passive income doing this but oh it's like God. part of that right like it's like we're told that we have to make a lot of we have to, we should be always being productive to make money to yes, like live yes, a life that's yes. of luxury whatever and so i've been thinking about how that impacts just like how i think about how i'm spending my time like to relax is something you have to d- to work for yes like you have to deserve it yes. is the way i see it yes. which is so fucked up it's toxic i know cuz we should literally just be sitting and looking at trees and eating fruit i think i know but instead i'm like <gasps> i need to write a script and also hold down uh, go to grad school i know dude it's all it's it's all of it yeah and it's like yeah i don't know (laughs) but you'll never you'll it's it's never enough but i think as like i'm getting older i'm just like you know what 
it's okay. You can take a break. You can take a rest. Do you feel that though? Because you're doing a lot of stuff. You think so? Well, you're a mother, and you have like you. You're a dentist. Yeah, and I you, am. Like still perform here yeah, and there. Yeah, yeah. I've definitely dropped off. I was performing a lot more, and then like this year, I've... I mean, like I watched you perform full pregnant. Yeah, when I was pregnant, I swear I was up like multiple times a week. Yeah, I would like literally be like puking morning sickness, but I'm like. I have to. I felt this super sense of urgency. And then yeah. after I had the baby, I also had a super sense of urgency and I was performing and performing. And then the and then the strike happened. Yeah. And it was summer and I had like not really taken a break. Uh-huh. And I just took a break for That's a while. Great. Yeah. I guess and it's like kind of been going. I'm like, oh, I gotta like I, I I have to do stuff. But yeah, I'm, you know, writing new things and yeah. Gonna 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 do stuff, but I'm also just enjoying my time. Just you don't feel, like that's nice though. Like, does it feel good to rest? To rest? Uh, yeah, it does. But I also feel a that, lot like, of anxiety. I can't relax. I, I can't relax. That's how I feel. Yeah, I'm like that's what I'm working in therapy about. I know. Of like, why do you have like we questioning my need to like move be moving towards a goal at all times? Yeah, and I think that's also the Asian American experience. Yeah, um, I think. Will never. I mean, like, there's a lot of pressure as someone. Were you for? Were you like the first person in your family born here? Or were you? Did you? Were you born I'm elsewhere? like f- no. I'm like fourth generation. Like, so oh, my, my great grandpa wow. moved wow. here. Check myself. <laughs> Check but my yourself. on my mom's side, I'm the first generation. Yeah, she's from Japan. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'm um. I'm first generation. Like, I'm yeah. first one born here. And yeah, you know, you just hear all about how your parents struggled right. and all this other stuff and. You feel a big sense of like I have to make it. Yeah, or also like I owe them. Yes. Success. Oh yeah. In this very. But you kind of like do. Yeah, to- <laughs> I know. I kind of like feel that way. Like I want my kid. Like I'm gonna be upset if my kid's not like successful in some sort of way. I sometimes am so amazed by like white people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just. What if I just full stop ended there? I'm sometimes amazed by white people. And honestly, yes, me too. I'm just really amazed. <laughs> um, no, I am really truly amazed by sometimes like by white people who are like don't don't feel like they owe their parents anything. Anything. I'm really amazed by that mentality. But I also sometimes think that white parents like don't do enough for their kids, though. I could see that too. You know, as you get older, you start to understand the real important stuff in life. Sunsets, being with friends, and of course, your Helix sleep mattress. I love my Helix mattress. Uh, It is so comfortable, and since I got it a few years ago, it's really improved how I get my rest. Every body is unique, and everyone sleeps differently. That's why Helix has several different mattress models to choose from, each designed for specific sleep positions and feel preferences. How will you know which Helix Sleep Mattress works best for you and your body? Take the Helix Sleep Quiz and find your perfect mattress in under two minutes. Once you find which mattress is perfect for you, your personalized mattress is shipped straight to your door free of charge. Helix knows there's no better way to test out a new mattress than by sleeping on it in your own house. That's why they offer a 100-night trial and a 10-15 to year warranty to try out your new Helix Sleep Mattress. There are models with memory foam to provide optimal pressure relief if you sleep on your side. There's also models that are more responsive uh, for people who sleep on their back or people who want to sleep on their stomach. Don't take my word for it though. Helix has been rewarded number one mattress by GQ and Wired Magazine. Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows to our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com Asian and use code HELIXPARTNER20. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long either. With Helix, better sleep starts now. Like, I think, like, Asian people, are, Asian parents are, like, annoying, but they, like, always have your fucking back. I love that you're whispering, like, w- we can't let the white people hear this. <laughs> I think, like, sometimes white parents are, like, bad parents. <laughs> Wait, recently? No, yeah. Recently, I was talking to somebody, and they were explaining their family. Sh- I asked, like, could you tell me about, like, um, your family? And it was the most complex because we Mike and I have talked about this white family structures can get really complex mm-hmm. because like in <laughs> Asian families it's rarely that complex you don't like divorce get married like four times yes, and then like yes, have yes, all yes. these stepchildren yes, and yes, like whatever yes, yes. which is fine like that's fine that it's complex it's just like not my culture no so I remember I was just like sitting there and it took so long to get through the family stru- just the structure of yeah, it yeah and I was like this is being white is crazy it's and exhausting. also like a lot of the parents and I'm not saying this doesn't exist with Asian parents parents but it's just like 
uh, white parents who probably just they had they got pregnant. Yeah. And so they have kids, but then they're like kind of absent parents. Yep. And they just like move around doing whatever they want to do. And yep. I was like, I didn't know that you could just do that. Yeah. <laughs> I it's mean, really fascinating. It's like a cultural difference. It is a huge cultural difference. I mean, granted, like, were my parents, my parents were like a little absent and a little checked out, and I kind of like did way more things than I should have done when I at my age. Uh huh. But um, they were still so like like effusely like loving and mm-hmm. there for me, and honestly, there for me financially. Right. Um, my parents have been very there for me financially yeah, a, a, into adulthood. Yeah. I'm I'm not gonna like lie and say I did it on my own. I absolutely did not. Like yeah. I have help constantly to this day yeah from them and i think that like that's something i want to give to my child one day right i'm like if i can <laughs> i know well we're I'm a like, different generation <laughs> i'm like uh, come see me at my dental practice yeah. <laughs> ppo insurances <laughs> help me support my child yeah. <laughs> while he's in his 30s <laughs> i've been the other thing i've been saying a lot is we only know what we know yeah and so it's like th- we know how our parents raised us so yeah. all, that's how we want to Raise our kids. Raise. It's not even how we want to. It's how that's all we know. Yeah. So it's like because I got that from my parents. If I ever become a parent, that's what I expect myself to give them as well. Yeah. Yeah. That has been my mantra recently. Totally. We only know what we know. We only know what we know. And um, yeah, I think like there's just a, a lot of like fam- family, but like happy to be around your family. Like there's just yeah. like like I feel like even though, you know, my parents aren't perfect, but like they genuinely enjoy spending time with us. And yeah. I definitely got that they genuinely like liked being around us. Oh, you know, so I feel like that's something that, you know, is important. How many siblings do you have? I have a sister. Just the two of you? Just the older sister. OK, yeah. so you're the youngest. You're the baby. I'm the baby. Yeah, I'm the baby. <laughs> Because I'm the oldest of three. Oh, wow. i girl. Oh, my God. You know, like oldest sister energy. Oh, wow. I like. I get that from you. Yeah, I'm like really like. You're very like. I have to achieve. Yes. Or the family will die. Literally. Like, that's I'm like, the roof, there will be no roof over our heads unless <laughs> I work really hard. Like, that's like my mentality at all times. I love that. That's good, though. <laughs> it's good. And I'm also trying to undo it. Are you a Virgo? No, but I have a lot of Virgo in you my chart. You have a lot of, okay, yeah. I, I actually have that. mostly Virgo in my chart. What's your sign? I'm a Leo sun. Okay, I see it. <laughs> what I are you? It. Scorpio. <gasps> we're going to have, we're going to get really close and then we're going to have a fault. Oh. Falling out. <laughs> That's like my journey with every Scorpio. Oh God, we're so toxic. <laughs> we're so like in, we're like, we are you. We're like, we are there, we are there. And then we're kind of toxic. <laughs> no, no. I, uh, I'm like a Scorpio, Aries and Capricorn. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, this is conversation that, w- that you would not be part of. <laughs> You're like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> which which one are Aries? Aries moon, moon and Cap rising. Oh my god, that makes sense. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that makes sense. I'm like mostly fire, air, except for every like in my main three, and uh-huh. then everything else is earth. Oh, I love that. Like, yeah, secretly earth. Yeah, I could see that. I could see like that. Like secretly see. very. I could see practical. all of that because you're like yeah, you're fire, you're passionate, you like love the limelight, you like yeah. the nightlife. And then um, you like to boogie, um, and uh, yeah, the air you're you're all thinking, yeah, and, you know, very intelligent. And thank you, love that. Hey, mm-hmm. thank you. Wait, but I wanted to hear about your theory on late stage capitalism and IVF. Okay, I believe I wait. Okay, first of all, abortion. I don't think abortion is about women's bodies and control. I mean, yes, there is an element of that. Yeah, but I think it's about having extra bodies. I think that like our financial system, our economic system, will collapse if we don't have enough people. Um, our whole financial system is a pyri- pyramid scheme. It's like a giant MLM. Okay? okay, you need the base of the pyramid. You don't have the top of the pyramid without the base. Okay, and the base of the pyramid is people working low wage jobs. Uh huh. So people filling prisons, people. Uh, going into the military. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that this is like the like this is just the stuff that you need bodies for, mm-hmm. right? Filling the military, working Amazon, like you know, working in warehouses, right. w- working labor. things, labor, labor that's unfortunately not paid well, right. no benefits. People you can like kind of use and abuse, mm-hmm. disposable. Um, you need a lot of people for that. The best type of people to fill those things are going to be people that 
you know, unfortunately, are babies that are not planned for. So if you have a lot of babies that are unplanned for, they're not you're not going to have the financial resources, you're not the emotional resources, uh-huh. the capacity to care for them and give them what they need. Unfortunately, they may not like have as many opportunities. And these are the opportunities that will lead them into that. Uh-huh. Our birth rate is declining. Yeah. So this is like where you're going to get more people for that. On the other hand, with IVF, IVF is for people. Most people who are doing IVF are people who are like, well, I'm not ready to have a kid when I'm of my prime fertility age. I'm going to be working on my career. Financially, I want to be a little bit more stable. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you're doing IVF because you've tried, you want it, you're ready to, you know, put your body through a bunch of shit, put a lot of money into it. So people who, that's a form of natural selection. So if you have people who are like doing the most to have that kid, that kid for the most part is like, has a lot of things that's going to make them a little bit more cared for they're going to more likely probably like graduate high school maybe go to college maybe have a better well-paying job it's less people you want and and i think that the powers that be uh-huh. want less people like that i interesting yes and then like the elite 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 will like do whatever the fuck they want i know i mean i mean but this like, is like the you know upper middle class people that are like or like the middle class people that like have the ability to do ivf or like yeah will put themselves out there i see i that's interesting the wait so the powers that be are like the like like lawmakers and stuff that are like yeah like the like you know interest. the 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 business interest the the corporate interest the like that kind of yeah stuff. i mean you're not i understand i don't think it's like some is. like evil no, cabal no, that's it, like coming up with this but i think it's like a interesting coincidence yeah yeah i mean it, i mean like from a theory perspective like that it is what it is it is yeah, yeah. but it's also just like increasing what it's interesting it? the wealth gap the wealth gap yeah because the, the the truth is like the more the more you make people struggle to survive, the less they have the ability to question. Yeah, and the because more you're just trying to survive. Yeah, you're just trying to start. Like I I mean this is super. I mean this is a, I mean I'm sorry this is a comedy pre- podcast, but this is so yeah depressing. we'll get into really funny we're into really funny things. But I was just like very sad the other day. I was just like looking at um a line of people that were waiting. To, I'm sorry, I'm going to get really emotional. Oh. Um, like they were waiting to get food. Yeah. And it just made me really sad that I'm like, these people are probably waiting in line for like an hour or two, you know? And it's like such a waste of time when you're poor and you yeah. don't have anything because you're just struggling to survive. Yeah. And there's like nothing... And then when you just don't, when you're literally waiting in line because you have nothing, you can't revolt, you can't organize, you can't work together to make things better. I know. Have you seen Poor Things? No, I need to. Okay, never mind. (laughs) (laughs) Then I won't talk about it because this is a theme that comes up. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Yeah. You should watch it, but it's like, basically the point is like, um, Poor Things is, I have a lot of thoughts about it, but uh, the concept is someone who like, doesn't know anything right like it's like a child like yeah re- like brand new person who's like an adult an adult body yeah and so she like sees experiences everything for the first time but mm-hmm. one thing is like seeing like people struggling and dying yeah. yeah and she like can't handle it yeah but then everyone else around her is like desensitized because it's just like how society works and i was like that is a like it is really f- it's fucked really up fucked that we're up. just like we're so blind yeah. and we're so numb to it but otherwise, just like, you're just like consumed. Constantly. I know. That's how like I feel that all the time. An interesting thing. What was it? I saw like a like a post about like on Threads because I <laughs> deleted my Twitter <laughs> off my phone. So I was on Threads and like there was some post about like unionizing or something, which I was like, I it wasn't even like a it was just like a news article. Mm-hmm. I can't remember what it was, and I clicked the so stupidly to read the comments and it is wild to see how many people who are anti like Union? that like or like an, just like anti like la- la- they're like oh well that's what you get for whatever and i was like i feel like it's not that hard to like be on the side of like not Unions? the super rich guy yeah i i mean yeah i think it's like this mentality because it's this individual mentality oh, no. that oh if i do that then one day when i become a billionaire people are going to unionize in my factory and I i'm know. like you're not going to be a billionaire like yeah. you're probably not going to be a billionaire yeah. we should all be looking at trees and eating fruit get over it literally <laughs> Um, okay, let's just switch to something lighter. Okay. I don't know if this is lighter, <laughs> but how is it being a mother? It's great. <laughs> uh, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, it no, but it's 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 really fun. Um, your baby is 
a little over a year old. A little bit over a year old. Okay. Um, it's cool. Like I, I, Is it hard? It's so hard. It's just like, imagine when you're like, oh, I have to like get up and like, you know, get ready. But then you have to like get up and get a child ready. Yeah. And you're like, fuck. <laughs> what? I'm also like, wait, I have to keep this person alive? Yeah. The rest of their life? That is so wild. My life? The rest of my life? Yeah. It's so crazy. Yeah. How do you like sustain a sense of like independent, like your own identity outside of that? Is it hard? Um, No, I'm just a really self-centered person. Okay. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. No, um, you you rely on other people. Mm. You have to like, I think you really like, I'm just like really blessed to have family nearby because my in-laws are in, in the city and like, um, yeah, so there, if we're going to like go out or like go for a weekend or go to a wedding, like we can just like drop them there. You yeah. Know, that kind of thing. That's I mean, really so I'm nice. here, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely hard. I definitely see how people lose themselves. Yeah. In it. I'm always amazed when people who are performers, like comedians do it. I know. It seems so hard. It's really hard. It's hard. Uh, it's a lot. It's a lot of work. Um, I mean, the worst is like making them food. Like feeding them, feeding them, and like I, I'm not someone. I'm okay. I'm not okay. I don't want to abuse my child. Yeah. I don't want to hit my child, yeah. except when I've like made something that I'm like, this is really good. Yeah, and then he spits it out <laughs> and doesn't want to eat it or like throws it. Yeah, and I am just like, I, I like literally have to leave the room. Yeah, I have to like go close the door. Yeah, you're like, I worked really hard on this. I, I'm like, I literally worked really hard on this, and I'm a chef and I make really good food. Yeah. and I was like, you're not eating this. Yeah. <laughs> Is so he that's picky? really triggering. No, he's not picky, okay, but he's good. just like, you know, like I made these really great eggs and he just looks like, <laughs> he just like threw them. And I was like, you little yeah. shit. <laughs> I worked really hard. Yeah. You do. I, I, you've posted some things about cooking and it looks really good. Like oh everything God, you make thanks. looks really good. Yeah. It, is that like a thing that you do? Like yeah. you always cook? I always. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really into Do you cooking. just make it up? I make a lot of it up. I make I a lot of it that. up. Really? What? Yes, you can. No, I follow recipes to a T. Like the Virgo in me, I'm like, wow. I need directions and then I will follow them to a T and they will turn out delicious because yeah. I follow the rules. But you should see me cook because it's like, it's like I'm like constantly just like looking at I, the rules. I am very triggered by that. <laughs> I am so, you have no idea how triggered I am when people take a spoon out and they're like measuring That's spices. Me. I'm like, I you just like. You see my vibes? I'm, of course. And just like knowing, Girl, I was you're like, Asian. You're I know, but I feel like vibes. I just don't. I don't trust myself to know like how to fix something. You always okay. That's the thing. The thing about cooking. I mean, there's like a book. It's called like Salt, Fat, yeah. Acid, Heat. I would say like start there and learn like some basics of like how to do certain things yeah. and how to fix something. Like if something's too sweet, you might need some more sour. Right. If something's too fatty, you need some more sour. If something's too sour, you need some more fat. You know, like just how you add things to like make it work. You can do it. It's just practice. I guess. Yeah. I and mean, I could just literally just read a recipe. And I just mean, do it. girl. You would be really. You That's would, some white people behavior. I know. I know. And it, it really is. Um, If you saw me post cooking and you saw my like dish rack of all the measuring uh, cups, you would disown me. I only use measuring for baking. That's the only time I would be find that acceptable. I don't even. I don't bake. I don't like baking. I don't like baking. It's too much. I like salty foods. I love sweet foods, but I don't want to bake and then have a like a big. Thing. That is my thing. When people bake and then they have like fifty cookies, I'm, I'm like, so what are you gonna do? Eat the cookies, Eat all fifty of those, and cookies? I will. Yeah, and I will. But I mean, that's fine. But I just, I'm like, I don't want to. I just get sick of it after a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, yeah, where yeah. something salty, I I can just like eat that. Oh yeah, forever. yeah, yeah. But I love I love a salty salty food. Yeah. I love Asian food, like all yeah. Asian food. I keep running into the mic. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, obviously, I love Asian food. Mm. I here's my complaint about living in New York. It's that sometimes it's hard, it, depending on what neighborhood you're living in, to like get the right ingredients. I think I'm like in a neighborhood yes. right now that's not super Asian, so it's really hard for me to get stuff. And if I do get it, it's super expensive. Yes, because I don't want to buy sesame oil from like those stores that sell like the Grazza oil and like you know fifteen dollar bag of like pimento. And that's where when LA wins because you just like have access. <gasps> I know. I want to like ninety nine ranch. I know. I want the big ass. I want like Patel Brothers. Like I want. Do you guys have a car? Yeah. So you get to like drive. I know, but I'm like I hate driving. Uh, I'm from Jersey, like I should be driving, yeah. but I don't like drive. I I, I I just kind of feel like I'm gonna die all the time when you're driving. I feel like I literally get in the car and I'm like, do not hit children. <laughs> like I'm like, oh, there's a child, don't hit that. Like I literally have to tell myself like, 
there's a, like you're gonna kill somebody. But also, I'm. Um, New York is insane. I don't know how anyone drives here. I don't know how you guys do it. My, I was in my lift today and I was like, people just jump out oh, yeah, yeah. of nowhere. Yeah. And when I'm walking, I hate cars. Yes. But when I'm in a car, I hate pedestrians. Yes. And I felt that today where I was like, how dare everyone just like step out? Yes. Meanwhile, cut to me taking the train home. I'm going to be that person. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be like. <laughs> Fully. Yeah. Just like in, the, in the crosswalk always. Yeah. Just like head, arm, legs out into the like street being like, can I go? Yeah. When it's like, like fully not my turn. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like my move is um, I do this thing where, you know, when pe- when cars like make a right hand turn into the crosswalk yeah. and they like sometimes they're like, just go. I make eye contact with the driver and I violently wave my hand <laughs> at them like this yeah. as I'm walking because I'm like. They made eye contact with me. They're not going to hit good. me. Yeah. They're not going to kill. Like, I, like, do that. I, I constantly, like, I make eye contact and wave my hand at people. And it works. I think everyone should do it. <laughs> if there's one thing you take from this podcast is that when you cross the road, you make eye contact with that driver and you just do a little wave. Take up space. Take up so much. And as a driver, I would love if somebody did that to me. Really? Yes. <laughs> I'd be like, great, thank you. I see. I see you. I won't run, I'm not going to run, run you, you over. over. But I will honk. I'm not going to honk. You don't honk? No. My Lyft driver today was laying on that horn the whole time. I'm, oh. Also, he said thank you to me 20 times. I don't know what he was thanking me for, but I kept being like, thank, pre- no, thank you. Your presence. Your presence. <laughs> Two Asian people going, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. No, no, thank you for like the whole ride. And I was like, I don't know what we're doing here. We thank each other so much. He was great. At the Aww. end, he thanked me like four times. So sweet. And I said, no, thank your, you. He wanted your, he was so happy for your business. Yeah. But it was just so funny. I was like, I don't, and then in the middle of the ride, he turned around and go, thank you. Like in the middle, I was like, oh no, 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 thank you. <laughs> what a beautiful little community I built in my life today. I love that. <laughs> Usually I'm just like, hi, thank you. Yeah. And then like, that's I it. have been doing a thing where I don't talk. Because I'm a I don't like to talk. Loser. I don't like to talk. Okay. I don't like to talk either, but up until like three years ago- I would talk a lot because mm. I'm a people pleaser. Mm. Um, and so I would go out of my way to like, mm. oh, like, like, how are you? Do mm. you live here? Mm. And only recently have I been like, I don't need to no. learn the whole life story of every Lyft driver. No. Also in San Francisco, I definitely had an experience where like someone was like, just like really racist. And <gasps> I didn't want it. Be- I was in like, San Francisco. Yeah. He said some weird, he was a British guy. And he oh, said like God, weird the- things Why about. It- Japanese Ugh. people and, and I was because he like he's like you're Japanese hate, and I was like British yeah. people can just they need to go <laughs> get out of here they need to go they just need to go I know I I was also like why are you doing here this to me here in San Francisco but you're in San Francisco you're in the Bay Area bro like what are you doing it's a bunch of Asian people but then he was just like you know he'd be like you know Japanese people and then he started saying stuff and I was like this is like the beginning of like a horrible stand up bit. You know what I, I know. mean? Like, I was like, don't do this. He's probably like working on his type five. Yeah. But at that time, I had no, I was such a pushover that yeah. I was just like, and I didn't want to like cause a scene. Also, it's like a safety concern. Oh, yeah. So I was just like, would let it happen. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, thank you so much for the ride at the end. I was like, I hate my, that I let myself just. So I now know. I just don't engage. Don't That's engage. That's a new thing for me. Don't engage. Boundaries. Boundaries. Take your time, take up your space. <laughs> Hey. But also, like, could you imagine if I was like a British, I'm, like I was in England as a a, a a Lyft driver, whatever they have there, and I was just like, these British people colonize everything. Yeah. They'd be like, get out of here. Yeah. I mean, they'd be like, get out of here regardless. But you yeah, know. that's true. <laughs> they'd be like, you're existing yeah. here for what? Or they'll be like, Americans are like this. Yeah. Have you seen those TikToks that go viral about like British people complaining about Americans and then American people will stitch it and drag them? Oh, and I'm like, I love it. This is so interesting. <laughs> yes, I love it. I love that. That's the only time where I'm proud to be American. I love those. I love when like Europeans are like stuck up about some bullshit and yeah. then Americans come back and be like, yo, fuck yeah. you. But at the same time, if anyone from Europe wants to give me citizenship, oh my God. I'll take Talk it. Talk about racist. They're so racist there, man. But I will take health insurance if I need it. <laughs> that's true will you, like it's like will you sustain like a uh, day-to-day racism for health insurance i know i know i thought about that i, I was mean, like how much can i handle yeah so i can like not have to pay a lot for an ambulance ride oh god oh god <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh boy, boy i love doing comedy in 2024 <laughs> 
before. I know. I know. I was like, I wish I had more dating stories. I know. I'm it's like, a lot lighter. So sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm like late stage capitalism. Let's no, talk about okay. the bread lines. I'm trying to think of like a fun thing, like fun thing to cap off the conversation. I really wish I had more dating stories. I just really haven't been dating. Um, do you have any tips for me to to meet people in real life? Yeah. Oh, I'm a I'm a geriatric millennial. Uh huh. I'm an elder millennial. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> when I I'm an elder millennial. I, I, I'm a geriatric millennial. I'm a geriatric millennial from New Jersey. Yeah. And when I first moved to the city, uh huh, 2008, uh-huh. when you were like literally like. <laughs> You were high. You were graduating high school. Yeah, I was literally in diapers. You were literally. You were literally really learning to crawl. Yeah, I was in these mean streets. We had no smartphones. Yeah, we had. I had no smartphone. Period. Uh-huh. I used a map. <laughs> I used a map. I used the Onion. I would read the Onion, and like there'd be like, oh, check out this rest. I would like look in the newspaper for fucking restaurants wow. when I first moved to the city. So we didn't have any a- apps, anything. The best way uh-huh. to meet people, I think, is through friends. I think it's like going out there, going to parties, and just like go, go like have your friends, like yeah. Okay, I've done. I've tried. Yeah, I've really tried. Yeah. Unfortunately, all my friends are comedians. Oh God, comedians don't date a comedian. I know comedians don't want to date comedians. I mean, comedians end up dating comedians because yeah. that's the world we're in. Yeah. And the other thing is. Every person goes, there's no one good enough for you. Because I think, yeah, you just need to start. T- I think the answer is you need to start dating women. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I mean, like, that's what everyone's like, are you sure? And I'm like, I mean, I know. I always am like, keep it open because I want to be cool. I'm like, maybe I'll date a woman if it feels right. But I've just, you're like, like, you're probably going to. Yeah. I've just like, never felt that. Or, I'm like, not against it. No, you just, it, you are who you are. Yeah. I'm like trying to figure out my therapist was like. I, it's so wild, but my therapist has become like my dating coach. Uh-huh. She's like, "What if you take um like a one off furniture building class?" <laughs> like I'm uh-huh. like, I'm like this is what therapy is. Like she's like, "What if?" Because I literally at one point I was like, "I don't want to drink so much," mm-hmm. which is part of dating culture. Unfortunately, I, was yes. like, I just want to drink that much with like strangers. And then uh, she was like, "Then do stuff that's not doesn't require drinking." And then I literally went like, "What?" Like I couldn't think I of know. any single thing. And then. She had to like give me a list of activities, and that's when I was like, my therapist is becoming a dating coach. Oh, I just thought of something. Okay, rock climbing. Get into oh, climbing. God. Get into climbing. I climbing make fun girls of are rock hot. Climbing. I know, but I Bl- make climbing fun girls. of rock climbing. Oh, but it's so fun. Is it's it a do great. You rock climb? I did in college. I'm like into. You sur- were rock climbing in college. That's we had a rock. Cool. We had a rock wall at my at Rutgers University, New yeah. Jersey. Rutgers University. Shout out all the Asians that probably go there. <laughs> Um, we had a rock wall there and yeah, I, I loved it. It was really, I mean, I also like wanted to hook up with guys. There. <laughs> Is that why you were doing it? I was a little A, a little B, a little A, a little B, but I also was like, yeah, this is fun. It's a great workout. It's so fun. And it's not insufferable. I feel like some of the people are like insufferable. Yeah. The, there's always a level of like anything involving gear yeah. where people are going to be <laughs> just straight up insufferable. Any white people, true. any white people and gear or like what, like a sport where it's like, like I was going to say like, she get into surfing. Surfer boys are hot too. I, yeah. But that's just a really hard. It's really hard. Logistically hard. Yes. Thing. Yes. Yes. If I go into climbing, I feel like I'm going against every well, single thing okay, that but, I believe. But I stood you're in for. Greenpoint. There's a there's like the cliffs there. There's I like know. other like yeah, you should do that. Oh, that's God. a good way. I Maybe. feel like I feel like um, you're like a hot Asian girl. That's like white kryptonite. The little, little white boys will be all up on you. I just but no, like there's also a lot exhausting. of but there's also a lot of Asian dudes, a lot of Asian bros that are that are climbing. Regardless of race, I find them to be. I feel that it will be t- like. I, I just feel they're not my people, but that's me judging. Yeah. And I mean, that's not fair. But then you could like roast them and, and, uh, and that's cool. Yeah. It's like, you got to take a, a, remember like the pickup person, artist, yeah, the every, pickup artist oh of God. the, of the early, that was my generation. Yeah. Okay? Like negging. Yes. Negging. I was, I'm, I grew up with like guys with like feather boas, like negging me at a frat party, you know, <laughs> that's my culture. That's where I come from. My As an creation. elder geriatric millennial, negging with the solo cup, negging Let me with the solo this. cup to like ushers, yeah, I in will, the background. I will say this: I don't know how to neg. 
I'm like such I, can, a soft, I can't imagine. I know I'm anything. like such a soft presence <laughs> that if I I can't be mean. Be like, wow, your skin is really soft. I bet like you use uh, yeah, you exfoliate. Yeah, yeah. That's like I like that's the best I can do. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, oh well, yeah, you have you have muscles. Congrats on that. Why you why are you working out so much? That's like me nagging, <laughs> me asking a lot of questions, getting to know no people. <laughs> I'm so like when my I have a friend who's only nags. Uh, like she doesn't know how to be authentic. Like, it's yeah. like almost like a natural thing to just like go into negging. Yes, yes, and yes. And I was like, wow. I literally my instinct just go so earnest and genuine, and then self deprecate myself. Like, oh no, no, no! Do the opposite. <laughs> You got to go hard. Okay. Okay. You know how you hate these guys? Just be like, yo, you fucking dumb loser. No, don't do that. Um, I don't know. Just be like, wow. <laughs> like, make fun of them for being dumb climbers. Be like, don't have a personality. <laughs> Congrats. Congrats. That rock is now. Yeah. <laughs> My, I think our approaches are very different. Yeah. Did you get your husband by nagging? He kind of nagged on me a little oh, wow. bit. I, I think a little bit. You know what I'll you know what I think helped too? I never like saved his phone number or anything yeah. like that. So every time he texted me, I'd be like, who is this? And I was oh. also like very busy. I was dating, I was dating, I was dating, I was out in these streets. It was like the one year in New York where I was like out, I was going on dates and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, you know, friends set me up here, going out here, there, everywhere. Um, but I was just too busy to be bothered. And I, you know, and I think when you're unavailable, that's like attractive. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, I think, but also we were long distance and whatever, but right. well, we've been together since I was 23. Wow. That's right. You guys have been together for a really, really long, long time. time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of different life phases than where I'm at. Yeah. It's, 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 ju it's, ju it's a different, it's a different world. We like grew up together, but, yeah. um, yeah, I, I, I guess I guess my advice would be, yeah, we, we met through friends. We met like a... I do think that's the best way I to do it. I think it is. I think it's hard. I mean, a lot of people meet on the apps. I know. But the apps are just, um, I can't imagine there's there's like no chemistry there, no. you know? And there's no um, responsibility towards like sustain, like being like um, kind yeah. to a stranger. Yeah. I think that's the thing. It's like, it's very easy to like forget about ghost whatever like i've done it too it's because like i don't know this person you're a little stranger i met on the totally internet. whereas like through friends there's an accountability there's an accountability yeah if you're like totally a dick or something you can't yeah. do that but there's also a safety aspect yes. to that too because you're like oh this person has been vetted by yeah a mutual person so absolutely it's like you kind of jump into it in a different frame yeah online you have no idea you have no idea you could be a murderer Oh, God, I can't imagine. You should just do, like, workout classes with people. Okay. Just be like, let's meet here for Barry's Boot Camp, and that'll be our date. Yeah, but Barry's people? I know. Uh, Barry's people are the worst. Yeah. <laughs> but I love Have Barry's. You you I Barry's? love, I'm like, I love working out and, like, all that shit. Okay. I'm like, that's my thing. I feel that Barry's was good for me when I was, like, 24. Mm -hmm. And my body now can't handle it. No, it's my body so absolutely intense. cannot handle it. It's I hate so it. It's so intense, but I love it. They, like, you're just running straight, like, sprinting. Yeah. Oh my god, Maya. Um like yeah, it's 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 a rush. It's a rush. I and just like some hot twink just fucking yelling at you. <laughs> that, that, is that is my is dream. That is what Barry's is. It's just is. like okay, Barry's is the hottest women you'll ever see yeah. that also probably all like work in private equity. Yes. They're the ones that are bankrupting America. 100%. These like hot girls at Barry's are bankrupting America. Yeah. And just like the most just like disheveled, like schlubby. I mean literally the dating world. Yeah. Everything. I think it's just not even the dating world. I think it's the world. It's the world. <laughs> I was like at an equinox in um like the High Line, and I was just walking around, and I was like, wow, like everyone, it's like very gay. Like all the men were just so impeccable, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And every now and then, you'd see someone. I'm like, they looked like like the runts of the litter. Mm -hmm. Like they look like the little <laughs> mutant in a lab experiment. Uh -huh. And I'm like, that's the straight guy. <laughs> and that's. Our fucking dating pool. And they have no personality. I can fuck with somebody who is like a kind oh. of an uggo, but like has a great personality, funny, intelligent, kind, yeah. all of the above. At the, end of the, at the end of the day, all I care about, I mean like not all I care about, I care about like cleanliness and stuff like that. Yeah, but like you have I, to have I, hygiene. Yeah, but I, 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 I'm like indexing on personality. Unfortunately, a lot of that is sense of humor. Oh, yeah. Um, That's just me being like a broken comedian. But like I, that is like the one thing and it, it is kind of amazing how little of that there is but then i also am like i i am just in a bubble i'm in a bubble of people who have a sense of humor yeah so then my norm 
Uh, just gets like higher where yes. I'm like, oh, I just assumed everyone can do bits. Yes. Everyone can switch between like joking and being real. Yes. And then you kind of like leave the bubble and you're like, oh, not everyone has a sense of humor. The, the re- way I know that is if you post something on the internet that's a little ironic and then everyone doesn't understand what satire is. <laughs> and they're like, are you okay, Jenny? Yeah. Or like the one I always go back to is that I pretended to like own land upstate. <laughs> like me and my friend and we're like walking around. And it's like his old Polish family's like family farm they've owned for like a hundred years. Yeah. And so we're like walking around and it's just us being like, we don't know how to do anything, right? Like it's like clearly a joke. Yeah. Like I'm like sitting on a tractor and I'm like, what do I do now? You know, it's like that energy. Yeah. And the number of comments that I got, they're like, you are ruining, the, like you are ruining upstate New York. Oh First of all, we weren't even upstate New York. It was a joke. We're in a different state. Um, But like, just like I got dragged on the internet about the comments and I was like, oh, a lot of people don't have senses of humor. They just take everything at like face value. Yeah. And that's when I was like, I'm in a bubble. Yeah. You're of, like, in a bubble. Well educated, funny people. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I think also too, um, I feel like a lot of straight dudes like are probably gonna be intimidated by like when men say like they want funny women. No, they don't. They don't. They want women that'll laugh at their jokes. Yeah, yeah. They don't actually want a funny woman. It's true. Because they have to be really secure with yeah. themselves. Because women aren't funny, right? Right. So that's like that's like yeah that's not what they want. They want someone's like <laughs> you're incredible. Let me cook you food. I mean, like tell me that Matt Rife joke one more time. Yeah, I love. I Matt love Rife. Shane Gillis. Yeah, Shane Gillis is actually hilarious, oh and I god. love what he stands for. <laughs> oh my god, and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> well, you know, there's no solution to this. There isn't. I think the solution is that we just um, wait till the eventual apocalypse. Okay reform a matriarchy okay. and um yeah <laughs> the episode is going to end with me going all right um, <laughs> well uh we really covered all the topics oh my god <laughs> um okay well i think we've probably hit time i don't know i don't know what anything is 55. okay okay i don't want to like force the conversation <laughs> force the conversation i mean i can keep lot. talking i'm having fun oh, i'm having fun too thank you so much for coming this is so fun thank you for ditching I hope this your child i love ditching my child <laughs> any chance i get i am out with out of there do you have are is asian pop still per, like performing anytime soon we don't have a show yet um uh no we don't have a show right now okay i think we're you know like we're we'll, we will let y'all know when we have a show yeah, but we yeah. unfortunately don't have a show coming up okay. yet yes well let us know when you do because I, I do will. love I do love seeing you guys Aww. Um. okay Maya well thanks for hanging out with thanks me thanks so much for, for having me Jenny I hope I didn't bring it, bring it down too much well you know what it, it's part of life it is we're complex human beings that want to talk about society and also my lack of dating life and that's okay <laughs> we contain multitudes okay so for folks who want to find your work where can they find you um instagram is really great at maya dash and um if you check out girls five eva i'm gonna be in an episode <gasps> oh no wait wait i was i'm re-watching it right now because Re- i love so i love girls five eva i know and it drops soon next week it tre- drops next week i'm gonna be I, yeah I th- hopefully i don't get cut i don't know yeah but um i'm in it like i think i'm in the finale episode but i booked it four months after i gave birth three months after i gave birth and it was really uh, a strong accomplishment for me wow so congratulations I felt really happy about that i love i I'm not kidding. I love Girls 5 Eva. It's so, so that's good. That's very exciting. It's so good. I'm very happy. Um, I'm with Renee Ellis Goldsbury. Oh, my God. Yeah. She's the nicest. Is she the best? She's so gorgeous. She's so beautiful. So lovely. She, like, stayed and did the scenes, like, when I the camera wasn't on her. Oh, wow. Which I was like, that's a fucking professional. Oh, my God. <gasps> I can't wait to. I mean, like, I was already excited, but now I really can't wait. Yeah. Okay, I'll take a picture. Kind of put it on my Instagram. Ah! Um, anyways, yay, yay, congrats. I can't wait. And you can always find us on Instagram at Asian Not Asian Pod. And I'm at Jenny Arimoto. Um, Mike, do you have anything you want to say? Half of oh, yeah, sat, you sat have through it, all, of all, this. Of the, all of the trauma, just of kind of like us you? absolutely dragging you. You're all men. wrong. Everything you said is wrong. <laughs> in no way reflects the uh, attitudes and positions of Asian Not, Not Asian <laughs> Podcast. No, it was awesome. Well, thanks everyone for listening. Thank you, Maya, for joining. Thank you. And we'll. We love you. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.